For those of you that don't know, I'm Maggie, and today I wanted to share with you all of my favorite books, TV shows, movies, things to keep you entertained while we're all kind of huddled at home hoping to kick this virus. The thing is, I haven't found a whole lot of time to watch a lot of TV shows and movies because I typically work from home three days a week. So quite honestly, my schedule has not been that different since all of this has been in place, especially now that Dallas is in a shelter in place order. And so we are very limited on what we can do. And that part has changed. Like I can't go exercise at the gym that I typically go to, things like that. But on the whole, I do have a pretty established working from home routine. So at the end of this, after I get through all of my entertainment suggestions, I do want to go ahead and give you some tips on working from home since this honestly is part of my everyday life So maybe what I've learned can help you if this is not your typical work scenario So let's go ahead and just start with TV shows I feel like people are looking for a lot more like longer term commitments than just maybe a movie Some of my favorite TV shows happen to be Jane the Virgin so good. If you have not seen Jane the Virgin and you're looking for something that's just a little bit different compared to a lot of TV that's out there, that's this show. I think it hooked me because it was so unique. I thought that the humor was so understated but hilarious and it is a telenovela making fun of telenovelas. And so if you're not super familiar with telenovelas, as I wasn't either, just watch it. Dive right in. The synopsis is Jane is this really goody two-shoes, follows the rules, wonderful daughter and student. She ends up getting accidentally, artificially inseminated by this nurse that she was going to see for just her annual checkup. She ends up having a baby with this hotel owner. Madness ensues. It's just, it, there's so many twists and turns. It's such a fun show to watch. If you haven't seen it, cannot recommend it enough. Some other shows that you've likely heard of and seen that I absolutely adore happen to be The Office and Parks and Rec. And I put these kind of in the same category. They're both kind of mockumentaries. They both have their talking head segments within the shows. Parks and Rec follows Leslie Nope and her team who works as part of the Parks and Recreation Department in the Pawnee, Indiana government. It's just hilarious. It's how Chris Pratt became super duper popular. It has um, Amy Poehler as Leslie Nope. Aziz Ansari like the cast is outstanding you have to go watch it it's hilarious in fact I want to actually start re-watching that show because I've actually seen The Office probably like six times all the way through that is hands down my number one favorite just turn on have it in the background show The Office follows Michael Scott and his paper company and just like the goings on of their crazy work environment because he is a super incompetent but lovable boss there's love stories there's friendships <sighs> It's a, one of those good feel good shows and I did hear a rumor that maybe it's not a rumor, maybe it's confirmed now that The Office is coming off of Netflix maybe next year or later this year. I don't know the details clearly. So watch it while you can. That's one that Brian and I have decided that we will purchase if it comes off of streaming services. Like we cannot be without it. The Crown. Man. The Crown is so good. If you're really into historical fiction, I hate to call it fiction because a lot of it's true but a ton of it includes like conversations that were had behind closed doors. So they obviously had, there's an element of fiction to it. But this follows the royal family, Queen Elizabeth, and kind of her growing up and how she assumed the throne and how that affected her family and her getting married and how she mothers and is the queen. And it kind of just dives into the relationships of all of the different people in her immediate family. So good, so well done. Honestly, that is like my favorite show that I've watched in years years that falls outside of like the comedy realm. I'm somebody that really loves historical fiction. I love to learn and to be entertained at the same time. So if you're like me and right now I'm craving knowledge and change and absorbing new things because I feel like my routine is so ho-hum and there's only so much you can do in a tiny apartment. And so turning on a TV show where I can actually learn something about history, the world and the royal family, if that interests you at all. My guilty pleasure TV show. Like I just mentioned, oh, I love The Crown, love to learn. The Flash. Okay, I am somebody that really likes Marvel movies. I like the superhero realm. And I don't know how I got started watching The Flash. I think that it was recommended to me from one of my college friends. And so I started watching it one day and I'm hooked. I think I'm on season six of it. It has Grant Gust as the main character. And I'm just saying, he's really, he's really good to look at, you know? And so why not go watch him save the world? Basically, it's about this superhero that is affected by a particle accelerator that blew up and gave him these superhuman powers. He is super duper fast. And so that means that he's really fast at running, but also his body has like rapid cell regeneration. And so he's like indestructible basically. 
anyway, it's good. There's love stories throughout it. And it also kind of parallels the timeline with The Arrow. So if you've watched The Arrow and you've seen kind of their like collaboration episodes and stuff, give The Flash a try if you're into that. I know, this is probably an unexpected TV show that for me. I don't know, you might be surprised. Some other ones, I really love The Great British Baking Show. Brian and I have officially seen every single episode of that wonderful feel good cooking competition show. And it's so different from American television where people are like taunting each other and how you get different advantages in the cooking show and how it puts other people down. And I just think that the Great British Baking Show is so positive. The contestants all love each other. They rally around each other. They're rooting for each other. If one person is having trouble finishing and another person is already done with theirs, they're rushing over to their stations to help them finish because they genuinely care and love for each other. And it just gives me the chills to think about. I think Brian and I have cried in the finale of every single season, not gonna lie. You get so invested in the people and their stories. They're so impressive, they're so talented. If you've been holding out on watching that show, I highly encourage you to do it it will make you feel so good and so happy and so light. It is definitely a feel good show. Which brings me to Queer Eye. And this is another super duper good feel good show. These five guys all have their own specific roles. So you have Jonathan who's in charge of hair and kind of like the makeover piece of everything. And then you have Karamo who's kind of like the inspirational life coach and kind of dives into their deeper problems and how they ended up the way that they did. Every person on the show is nominated for some reason and so they really go into their backstories. You also have Antony who's kind of the person that teaches them how to cook and or how to integrate their children into cooking or just how to lead a healthier lifestyle. And then you have Tan or Tan, however you want to pronounce it, and he's in charge of their wardrobe. So he takes them shopping, he teaches them things that are flattering on their body types, and he really shows them how to integrate what they want their personal style to be and just kind of transform that aspect to give them more confidence. And then there's Bobby, and he's kind of in charge of their home renovations or apartment renovations or whatever they choose. So in some episodes, it may be somebody that owns their own business, and so Bobby will go in and kind of like redo their entire office space and just make it something special for them. The people's lives that they impact are so touched by everything that they're doing, and it just shows you that there's good in the world. These are five guys who have faced a lot of trouble themselves, have been really put down. They've faced a lot of hardship and are still going out and making people's lives better, and it's just such a good show. I love it. I absolutely love it. Moving right along into movies. I have so many favorite movies and I like tons of different things. So my very top favorite movie of all time is You've Got Mail. Close second, Sleepless in Seattle. Do I love Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan? Yes, absolutely I do. I love a good, feel good romantic comedy. My mom has always said that You've Got Mail reminds her of her mom. And so I think for me, it's just like a, I don't know, a very meaningful like family connection as to why I love that movie so much. But it is genuinely a feel good romantic comedy. It's just a wonderful movie. Some other big favorites. One I just rewatched for the first time recently. This was my favorite movie. Went from like ages eight to like a senior in high school and that's Center Stage. You can find this on Netflix. I grew up dancing. I was in like a ballet company. It was a very serious thing that I did. That's where I met some of my absolute best friends of life. Dance means so much to me. And so this movie, I definitely discovered. My mom rented it, I remember. And I was so young, and it's kind of a racy movie, but it just all went over my head, so it, it was what it was. But if you are really into dance of any kind, it basically follows this girl, her name's Jody in the movie. They follow her through becoming part of the American Ballet Academy and how they make it to be professional dancers. And Miss Congeniality, ugh, I can quote every line of that movie. Every single line, I never get sick of it. Sandra Bullock is definitely my favorite actress. Hands down, love Sandra Bullock. Tom Hanks is also my favorite actor, fun fact for you there. Miss Congeniality is a hoot. I even thought that the second one was pretty good and it's kind of hard to do second movies like that when there was really nowhere for it to go, but it was funny, they did a good job. The Proposal, again, love Sandra Bullock. And Ryan Reynolds in this movie cracks me up. This is another one that I own. I have seen The Proposal 500,000 times and I laugh out loud 
every single time I watch it. I just really, really do. My favorite part, I'll tell you, is when Sandra Bullock is climbing down the stairs to get into the boat to go to his parents' house. They live in Sitka, Alaska, and so you have to like get to their actual house by boat. She takes forever to get down because she's wearing high heels and he's standing at the bottom waiting for her. She gets to the bottom and he's like, Congratulations, I'm 100 years old. I'm just telling you, that's my favorite part of the movie and I don't know why. Okay, I mentioned earlier that I watched The Flash and that I liked Marvel movies. I honestly recommend any Marvel movie if you have Disney+. Plus. They are pretty much all on there. A couple of them are still on Netflix just because of deals that they had with the different streaming services. Brian and I have been going back and watching all of the Avengers movies and that's been really fun. We've both seen them all and we just like to rewatch them. Marvel movies are great. All right, another recommendation if you have Disney Plus is to watch Free Solo. This is one that my older brother was like, Maggie, you have to watch it, you have to watch it. And finally, over Christmas when we were all home, we watched it all together. And I was seriously sweating throughout the whole thing. It's one of those stressful kind of documentaries or movies, kind of like 127 hours where you're so clenched tight the whole time. It's like that, but really good. I love those types of things. And so this is all about this guy named Alex who really wants to climb this specific mountain that I can't think of off the top. Um, El Capitan. El Capitan? El Cap It's the exact same thing that was the operating system on the Mac because it was the background of my computer for so long. So he wants to free climb that, which means with no equipment, no harnesses, no strings, no nothing. It's just his body and he's free climbing the mountain with nothing else. It shows kind of the process of him practicing and also the documentary crew that wants to film him doing this and they're actually friends with him in real life and so there's this like big emotional human component to it of like do we really want to capture our friend die if it comes to that and it is seriously so good you have to go watch that oh and i noticed this is on netflix and i watched it recently and so i have to recommend it takes two this is another one that i can quote from beginning to end i watched it a million times as a kid and so it was so nostalgic to see that back again if you were like me a 90s kid and it takes two mary kate nashley in general were, were high on your list go watch that It'll make you feel really good. Okay, I have a massive list of books. So I'm gonna try to fly through these and I'm probably not gonna give a long synopsis about each, but they're easily looked up online. I will have links to absolutely every book that I'm mentioning down below so that you can check them out if they kind of sound like they would be up your alley. So the first one is one that I most recently read and it's called Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. This was so interesting and I am really into nonfiction. I read plenty of fiction as well, but I, I just like to learn. Talking to Strangers was a very interesting read of how you don't know people that you don't know and how that affects our decision making and how that affects our views of them and how that can ultimately impact the world. So for instance, there's this entire chapter on Hitler and how those that knew him the best and were the closest with him were kind, kind of had the wool pulled over their eyes about him and about his intentions. And those that were really separated from him honestly had a better judge of the harm that he was doing and what would eventually come, if you will. So that was like a really interesting take on how you can sometimes be blinded by people that you think you know really well, when in reality, sometimes those that are more disconnected actually have a better read on them. There's also an entire chapter about interrogation, like people who are captured in war and the different interrogation methods or torture methods that work or why they shouldn't be used because they could actually result in inaccurate information. I mean, the topics are all over the place in that book. It's very serious. I wouldn't say it's a light read, but it's definitely one of those make you think, definitely changes your mindset a little bit when you finish kind of books. The Gown, another historical fiction. This one is so good. It is kind of a feel good story to me and it's basically this woman in present day finds these swatches of a wedding dress and it's beautifully ornately made and it's just these little pieces of it. And she notices that it's the exact same dress that I think it was Queen Elizabeth, I'm not totally sure, got married in. And so she's trying to like go and do the research to figure out how she has these swatches that are part of the Queen's wedding dress. And it is so good, so good. Educated, another really good nonfiction read all about this one lady's very, very different upbringing and just how that kind of shaped her, how she ended up going to college and overcame a bunch of odds and wow. It was one of those, it was a shocking read for sure. It is amazing that some people live the way that she described. This has been at the top of the number one bestseller list for like over a year now, I feel like, so good. Small Admissions and Limelight. 
These are both by an author called Amy Poppel. She's just kind of, I don't know how I found her or how I found the original small admissions recommendation, but her books are so good. I love the way that she writes. So she, small admissions is all about um, the life of a college counselor in a high school. And then Limelight is all about how this one woman kind of helps this very, very troubled movie star through this hard time. They're unrelated, it's not a series, two very good standalone books. Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. I love funny people biographies. Another really funny one I wanna recommend is Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me by Mindy Kaling. So good, her second one is also really, really good. Both of those I've read twice. Bossy Pants and Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me. I own them, love them, can't recommend them enough. The Martian, a really good book for those of you that like space or sci-fi or science in general. This book kept me at the edge of my seat. Yes, there's a movie based on this book already, so if you haven't seen the movie and you're looking for a good read, go read this. Seriously, top five favorite books of all time. The Martian is in it. And last but not least is a book that I have claimed has been my favorite book for so many years, and it's called The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. I am so fascinated by war. I love movies about war and learning about that because it's something that's so real but so different from any of my own experiences. I just think because so many of us are so disconnected from that, it feels like me paying my respects to it when I respect things that are made about it. I don't know. Maybe that's a weird mindset for me to have. I just find it so interesting. Right now while we're fighting this like war on a virus and we've been called to sit on our couches and enjoy time together and that's how we're gonna beat this. And our grandparents were called to go fight in these terrible, terrible actual physical wars. Like it's just crazy, it's crazy. Anyway, The Things They Carried is a really good make you cry book about these soldiers and what they carried with them when they went to war. So pictures of their families or special little items that meant something to them and it follows these specific soldiers around. It's so good. It really is so, so good. So that's all my entertainment recommendations. If you're curious about my favorite podcast, I'll be sure to link the video of my favorite content creators because I just recently mentioned all of my favorite podcasts in that video. So go check that out if you're looking for some more entertainment. But I did promise you some work from home tips. And I wanna start with a disclaimer that says, these may not work for you. I feel like this is such a, a personal way of working. People can approach this so differently. So some things that are being recommended by the news and stuff don't work for me. And I've tried this because I actually work from home three days a week ordinarily. This is something that I've already had to learn to do and I feel like I do a pretty okay job with it. I feel very productive in my work. So the things that work for me are, number one, establishing some sort of routine. So that's waking up at the same time as you would when you go to work. Or maybe setting your alarm for like 15 extra minutes late, but don't sleep in until like nine o'clock and then have to wake up and be frazzled and immediately start working. If you have pets or something like that, you're probably forced to do this anyway. But if you're not, like I didn't have a pet until very recently. So that took me a little while to understand that like maybe it's not good to sleep until eight and then to only have 30 minutes to myself before I actually have to be online. So for me, it was keeping my wake up times the same and just reallocating that time in the morning to something different, whether it's YouTube or editing a video or just sitting down with a cup of coffee and watching the news. Something to give yourself time to not be working while you're at home, that's important. My second recommendation is to establish a real work spot. I sit at my kitchen table in the same chair every single day. And this is just to train me to believe that this is my desk at work. This is the same desk that I sit in every day at work. I can focus, I can get my work done. It mentally shifts you into a work mode. It's not you lounging on your couch with your laptop or sitting in your bed with your laptop. It has you alert, you're sitting up, you're paying attention to what you're doing, and it really provides separation from you in your room or your couch in areas that you relax so that you don't bring work into those areas. Because if you start to introduce working from all of these different spots in your house, it turns your entire apartment or home into an office, and so you constantly feel like you need to be doing things for work. I just think it's a bad habit to get in, and so that's something that I learned kind of the hard way where I just felt like I needed to jump out of the window at the end of the day because everywhere in my apartment felt like work. And once I planted myself just at the table, things got a lot easier. Another thing is to make a to-do list. I am somebody that loves to see my planner written out of all the things that I have to do for the day because if I don't see my full written list of things that need to get done for work, 
I'm constantly in the back of my mind being like, well, what else needs to be done at home? If I don't see anything written down for work, I must obviously have time for something different. Let me just work on the home things instead. No, you've got to be regimented and prioritize your work things. However, if you're a good multitasker, I actually focus better if I'm multitasking because I feel more productive. I don't think there's any harm in doing your laundry and then sitting back down and doing your work. Laundry is a very passive activity. Of course, you can throw your clothes in the dry in the washer, let them wash, work for the hour, switch them over, and then you've knocked out a chore and your work all at the same time. So I don't like when people say don't do your house chores or completely separate your responsibilities. No, that's part of the luxury of working from home, you know? So I'm a fan of multitasking if you can handle it, but my mom, for instance, she hates multitasking. She feels like she can't focus on anything, so that may not work for her. That's why these are unique tips for every single person. Additionally, eat away from your desk. Take real lunch breaks. I typically have calls always during the noon lunch hour, which is so annoying, I hate it, but that just means that my lunch hour turns into one o'clock. And so at that time, I remove myself, I'll go take a walk, I'll sit at my couch and I'll eat my lunch while I watch a YouTube video. I completely separate myself at the meal time because that's fair to yourself. Just because you're at home and have the ability to eat at your table and work at the same time does not mean that you should. Studies actually show that if you take a break and step away from your computer, you're actually more productive once you get back. Compartmentalize some things so that you're not always constantly overstimulated. Those are all of my work from home tips. I know probably some of you are like, well, why didn't you say get ready for the day? And I'm like, because I don't need that. Like, I like for my skin to take a break from makeup and I feel like I can wear lounge clothes and be completely fine and productive, but for some people they can't. They need jeans, they need real clothes, they need to fully get ready, but that's not me. So I'm not gonna give that as a tip. It may be for you, give it a shot. Anyway, hopefully this is helpful and it's been really fun connecting with y'all through all of these kind of isolating times. So please list your favorite TV shows, movies, books, everything down below. I'd love to see what you're interested in to see if I need to add anything to my watch list. So if you like this video, then like it, stick around, subscribe, join the community, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.